Hi, this is Andy, and in this preview, we're going to look at IBM Rational Doors Next Generation and IBM Doors Next Generation on Cloud, or DNG for short. And in doing so, we're going to be talking about requirements management. There have been many industry studies that highlight the importance of good requirements management. Get it right, and we can reduce risk to improve the predictability of our projects, satisfy our customers, and ensure that our systems we're building are safe. Get it wrong, and, well, bad things happen. Some of the biggest problems development organisations face are poor requirements. They might have too few or even no requirements. They might have enough requirements, but they conflict, overlap, or are just plain wrong. And then there is the dreaded gold plating where the project adds additional requirements or features they think the customer will like, and the effort required to meet them simply isn't worth it. Let's see how DNG can help. Go ahead and click the button to open Rational Doors Next Generation. Now note that it opens in a new tab, so you can switch back to this Previews tab whenever you want. Now you may be asked to log in to Jazz.net, which is the website for products like DNG. If you don't have a Jazz user ID, then click the Register Now button on the right and pause this video while you fill out the registration form. If you already have a Jazz user ID, then use it to log in on the left-hand side. I've now logged in and I can see the Teams dashboard. You should be seeing the same thing. If you're not, then it's likely that you're a new user and the Jazz minions are still busy setting up your new ID, in which case just try refreshing the page until the dashboard appears. In the world of requirements management, collaboration between stakeholders is critical, and that's where IBM's Jazz strategy comes in. Web clients allow any stakeholder to participate with little to no learning curve. Everyone can use a web browser. Our journey starts here, on the project dashboard. Dashboards are a common capability across the Jazz platform. They can be created for the overall project, or for teams, or personal dashboards can be created for individual users. Dashboards give instant access to the project data that's most relevant for the current viewer, whether that's a test engineer looking at the current defect list, or a project manager looking at the status of the project. And what's more, the data presented in these dashboards is always up to date. In this sample, the widget on the left is showing a view of the test cases in quality management that have validated by connections to requirements in this project. The widget in the centre is showing the number of safety goals grouped by their ACIL rating, and that's their automotive safety and integrity level, part of the risk classification scheme that's defined in the ISO 26262 functional safety standard. Lastly, the widget on the right is showing the safety goals, their ACIL ratings, and the requirements that satisfy them downstream. Let's dive a little deeper into the project. Go ahead and click the Artifacts menu there in the title bar. Just underneath that bar, you should now be able to apply a filter. Right now it's set to All, so let's click on Modules so that we only see those. In the sidebar on the left, click on the plus symbol next to the Adaptive Cruise Control Requirements folder to expand it into a tree view. You can see that the project is organised into folders and has hierarchy, one of the basic tenets of managing complexity in requirements management. Hierarchy and structure allows us to deal with large volumes of data and also allows us to manage the separation of concerns between different stakeholder communities. Go ahead and click on the Item Definition Requirements Artifacts folder. Note that since we have a filter applied, the only thing we can see in that folder is a module called Item Definition Requirements. Go ahead and click that module to open it. A module is just another word for document. In fact, it looks a little bit like a word document. It gives structure to the requirements you can click on the little twisties to collapse or expand headings. But it isn't a Word document. Each requirement in the module is an atomic element. It's just simply being used in this module. 
That's another one of the basic tenets of requirements management, granularity. Individual requirements can be traced to other artefacts in the system, such as work items or design elements. They can be reused in many different modules. They can be locked for editing, allowing many team members to work on the same document at the same time, and any changes are captured automatically by DNG, forming an audit trail. We'll see all of this and more in a few moments, but first let's see something much simpler. At the top of the module, you should see a text box with the words type to filter by text written inside it. Click in that box and type the word speed and then hit the enter key. Notice that the module is now filtered, showing you only the requirements with that word in their text. Notice that in the left hand sidebar, there are views. Views are user customizable and allow both filtering and configuring of the display, converting the module into a kind of spreadsheet where the attributes and links of the requirements can be shown in columns. Go ahead and click the work item traceability view. You now have the document kind of view on the left and on the right is an additional column showing the work items in the Jazz work item system that have been traced to the requirements in this module. If you hover your mouse over one of those linked work items, you'll get a rich hover, another common capability across the Jazz platform. You can see essential information about linked artifacts without the need to actually navigate into the other tool. It's a huge time saver. Of course, these links are also navigable, so if you did click them, you would be taken to the right artifact in the right place in that other tool. Again, a huge time saver. If you click the downstream traceability view in the sidebar, then you can see that these item definition requirements are satisfied by requirements in another module further downstream. In fact, this project has been created to the ISO 26262 functional safety standard, which mandates traceability. So there are in fact modules at many different levels, and the requirements in those modules have traceability links between them. In a few moments, we'll look at another way to visualize and explore that traceability. But first, let's follow the link. Go ahead and click one of the requirements in the satisfied by column. Now, it doesn't matter which one you click, since they're all pointing at the same requirement in the next module down, but that's just because this is some simple demo data. You're now looking at the safety goals module, and the requirement you clicked has been selected. Now, in the list of views on the left, click the ASIL view at the top of that list. The display changes, and now instead of showing linked artifacts, we have columns that show various attributes of the safety goal requirements. Severity, probability, controllability, and the overall ASIL rating. Notice also that the top two rows don't have any values for those attributes. DNG has a very strong typing mechanism. You can define your own requirement types and the sets of attributes that those types have. In this example, safety goal requirements have an ASIL rating, whereas headings do not. Now this negates the need to have values like not applicable. In the list of views on the left, click upstream traceability. In the satisfies column, click any of those linked requirements there to return to the item definition requirements module. And let's look at another way to explore that traceability, the link explorer. Let's start with a single requirement. Go ahead and type the number 73 into the search and filter box you used earlier, and then hit the enter key. That should filter the module to show you only requirement 73. The time gap shall be maintained by a combination of brake control and engine management. Since the downstream traceability view is still applied, you can also see that requirement 73 is satisfied by requirement 147. Place your mouse into the first column so that the pencil icon appears. Click that pencil icon to open the context menu for this requirement. And way down at the bottom there, you can see an entry called Open Links Explorer. 
go ahead and click that entry. Now give the tool a moment or two to populate itself and you should see all of the artifacts connected to requirement 73 along with the type of link. Now we can expand and collapse this tree manually but there is a faster way. In the top right hand corner of the window there are four buttons. If you hover your mouse over those buttons a tooltip will appear to tell you what those buttons do. Go ahead and click the button furthest to the right, Configure Link Display. That will open a pop-up menu where you can choose the link types you want included along with the number of levels you want the tree to expand to. Click inside the Type to Filter box and type SAT. Then the list will collapse and you can select the one we want more easily, that's Satisfied By. Go ahead and click that Satisfied By checkbox. Whilst this dialog is open, set the number of levels to Expand option to 5 and then click the Apply button. Now again, this will take a few moments as DNG sorts through the database, but once it's finished, the view will reconfigure itself showing you a complete traceability path down through the various levels of connected requirements. Now you can use this view for navigation. Clicking one of the entries in the view will actually open it, but don't do that just yet. Go ahead and click the Configure Link Display button again, and let's add two more link types into the mix. Replace SAT with VAL to locate the validated by link and place a check in that box. Now that will include any test cases in Rational Quality Management. Next, replace VAL with REF to locate the refined by architecture element link and place a check in that box as well. That will bring in any linked model elements from the design management tool. Once you've ticked both of those options, click Apply and the view should repaint itself straight away. You'll find the linked model elements are at the far left. Since the model is at the systems engineering level, it's linked to the item definition requirements. If you hover your mouse over one of those linked diagrams and then click Show More in the rich hover pop-up, you can even view and pan around that linked diagram without going anywhere near the modeling tool. Test cases are at the far right since they're connected to the hardware requirements for the radar subsystem. Now this view shows traceability and is a very useful way of navigating around the connected artifacts, but it also highlights impact analysis, the ripple effect up or downstream as the requirements change. And if there's one thing that's certain in requirements management, it is that change is inevitable. Dealing with the effects of change can be a complex, time-consuming effort. Views like this help to manage that complexity and can even allow you to estimate the potential cost of a change before it's made. Okay, let's take a look at the hardware requirements. Scroll over to the right and in the next to last column click on Requirement 119. The hardware shall provide a layer to communicate with both Flexray and CAN bus systems. The Radar Subsystem Hardware Requirements module opens up and the requirement you just clicked is selected. Now note that this module has a sketch in it. This was created directly in DNG and is a very useful way to illustrate a concept before moving to formal modelling later. In the right hand sidebar, click the Selected Artifact tab. There you can see all of the attributes of the selected requirement including the last time it was modified and who modified it. But what were those modifications? Well, in a few moments we'll find out. But first, let's stay in this sidebar. Click the Selected Artifact tab again. That will collapse that section. Now you can see that there are three other sections. Artifact Comments, Artifact Links, and Where Artifact Used. Click Artifact Comments and note that that section changes its name to simply Comments. Then click the only entry in that section to expand it. 
What you can see there is a conversation between the project manager, the requirements engineer and the supplier. Conversations like these typically take place in external systems like email and are very quickly lost. Here they are maintained in context for an audit trail of why key decisions have been made. Click that comment section again to collapse it and then click the artifact links section. Here you can see another way to view the requirement traceability. This time just for this single requirement and only one level up or down. Click artifact links again to collapse that section and then click where artifact used. Because requirements are atomic, they can be used over and over again in modules, in collections and in reviews. This section shows you exactly where a particular requirement is being used. Go ahead and click the ECU requirements review link to open it in a new browser tab. You can see that this requirement is one of a collection of requirements that are part of this formal review process. Close this browser tab and switch back to the Radar Subsystem Hardware Requirements module. Now let's take a look at those modifications we mentioned earlier. In the main document view in the center, in the ID column, click the ID of Requirement 119. That will open that requirement up in its own view. At the top right hand side of the window you'll see an edit button and just to the left of that is a button with three horizontal lines. If you hover your mouse over that button the tooltip is more actions. Click that button and select the first menu item, open history. You're now looking at the historical view of requirement 119. Now you're currently looking at revisions, that is a list of all of the baselines and change sets that this requirement appears in. You can open the historical view for a specific change set or baseline, but instead go ahead and click the audit history tab at the top left hand side of the page for a complete audit trail for this requirement. Every change is listed here along with who made it. If you click on the expand all link at the top of that list, and scroll down, you can see that when changes are textual, the text of the requirement is even colour coded to highlight those changes, just like track changes in a Word document. Click on the close history button at the top right hand side of the page to switch back to the requirement, and then click the blue arrow in the requirement heading bar at the top left to return to the module view. Well that's it for this preview. We've only just scratched the surface here, so feel free to explore Rational Doors Next Generation on your own. And I'll join you again in the next preview.